Dear Speaker Armstead, pursuant to the provisions of Section 14, Article 7 of the Constitution of West Virginia, I hereby disapprove and return the enrolled committee substitute for House Bill 4145. This bill authorizes, among other things, United States citizens or legal residents of at least 21 years of age to carry a concealed deadly weapon without a license, provided that they are not otherwise prohibited from possessing a firearm under state or federal law. Law enforcement officers throughout West Virginia have voiced overwhelming opposition to this bill. In light of their concerns and in the interest of public safety, the exercise of my veto power is appropriate. Further, I wish to point out that the tax credit provision in Chapter 61, Article 7, Section 4, Subsection R is ill-advised and unclear. See page 9, lines 165 through 168. Not only will the tax credit have a negative fiscal impact on the state's budget, it will be difficult for the state tax department to administer. For example, the tax credit provision fails to identify the tax to which it applies, whether the credit is refundable, and whether it is a one-time credit or may be claimed in subsequent years. In view of the foregoing, I hereby disapprove and return the enrolled committee substitute for House Bill 4145. Sincerely, Earl Ray Tomblin, Governor. Must be received. The clerk has communication from the House. In accordance with Section 14, Article 7 of the Constitution, the House of Delegates reconsidered and again passed enrolled committee substitute for House Bill 4145 by a majority of those elected to the House to take effect 90 days from passage, notwithstanding the objections of the Governor. The Clerk of the House to the Senate signs Stephen J. Harrison, Clerk of the House of Delegates. Mr. be received, Senator from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that in accordance with Section 14, Article 7 of the Constitution of the State of West Virginia, the Senate proceed to reconsider House Bill 4145, heretofore disapproved and returned by His Excellency the Governor with his objection. Senator from Jackson moves, moves that in accordance with Section 14, Article 7 of the Constitution of the State of West Virginia, the Senate proceed to reconsider and enrolled committee substitute for House Bill 4145, heretofore disapproved and returned by His Excellency the Governor with his objections. Is there discussion? If not, the question is on the adoption of the motion by the Senator from Jackson. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. I declare the motion adopted. The question now is on passage of the bill. Notwithstanding the objections of the Governor, is there discussion? The Senior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I guess this is probably my last chance to say anything on this bill, uh, absent something really funny happening. So I just will take that chance one more time to say that, just to point out to, to the members, you know, there was an article in the paper this week that a, a couple was in the, the Charleston Mall. They were doing some funny activity. They reported the police. They found that they had uh, concealed weapons without permits. They were able to search. They found a bunch of drugs. They found a bunch of cash. They got themselves in trouble. I mean, understand, that's who we're helping with this bill, because I continue to hear that the most people will get their permits. Most law-abiding citizens will continue to get their permits. So this is who we're helping. We're helping the people who are doing wrong. Um, understand that, you know, this, is, this override is not just a slap in the face of the governor, which Oftentimes, people here are happy to do. Uh, Mr. President, if you're downstairs next year, the Senator for Marshall, you won't enjoy that as much. But, I mean, that's what we're, it's a slap in the governor's face, but it's a slap in the state police's face, sheriffs, municipal police officers, and the vast majority of our constituents. So I would urge you to go against this override. Is there further discussion? The Senator from Cabell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I voted in favor of this uh, piece of legislation previously, but I now rise to oppose it. Um, let me just share with you a brief story uh, which can be documented by a uh, police report in Huntington. Two gentlemen, this time last year, from Detroit, Michigan, were pulled over in Huntington, having just made a major drug deal. They were not felons. They possessed firearms, handguns, multiple. And when asked at the arrest stage about where are your license to carry a concealed weapon, 
they stated, well, we understand in Detroit that we don't have to have a permit in West Virginia. The officer said, well, Governor Tomlin vetoed that bill. You're under arrest. So I can hear them up in Detroit, Michigan. I mean, I think I possibly can hear the cheers about to go up. And don't think it's only Huntington. The people from Columbus that traveled over to Wheeling. The people from Baltimore that traveled to the Eastern Panhandle. The people from Atlanta that traveled to Beckley. The people from all over the Eastern U.S. that traveled to Charleston. The people from, did I mention Parkersburg? It's everybody. So, you know, my police chief has called me yesterday. My sheriff called me yesterday. My next sheriff called me yesterday. So I was wrong. And I ask you to vote to, uh, I vote to, I ask you please uh, support the government's, the governor's uh, veto of this bill. Is there further discussion? Senior Senator from the 15th. Thank you, Mr. President. I wasn't going to rise this morning and speak to this. I was just going to vote. But I'm going to add just a few more comments but from previous times that I've spoken about this bill. And I rise this morning to speak not for law enforcement, not for us, but for the people out in West Virginia, our citizenry. The law-abiding citizens is who I'm standing up to speak for. There's one thing that's absolutely for certain that when we do this piece of legislation, and that is, is that we're giving the people the ability to protect themselves without paying a fee. The last time I checked, we're not like the governor. I'm not like the governor that had state police following us around. None of the rest of us are. And when crime happens, law enforcement is not normally there to be able to take care of us. They're there to investigate it afterwards, call emergency services if you happen to survive, or put the chalk marks down and stuff our corpse in a body bag. And frankly, that's just a little bit too late for the average West Virginian like myself. This piece of legislation, mark my word, as the years go on, it's going to be proved to be an effective deterrent to crime. And it's going to do one of the things that I'm most proud of. And I can hear freedom knocking at the doors in West Virginia. And that's exactly what this does. The Constitution makes it clear, and we're honoring it, and we're honoring our sworn duty to honor that Constitution. Mr. President, I urge passage. Is there further discussion? Senator from Wayne. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, this is, this is a tough vote, and I will tell you something that... Um, really bothers me in this process. We've been discussing this bill for a long, long time, and it was just last night that I got a text, Senator from Cabell, I guess I'm not on the list to get a call from the uh, uh, Cabell County uh, Sheriff. I mean, he was up here the other day at a press conference. Why didn't these people come and talk to you then when they knew what was going to happen. You know, this, this bothers me when people that are in our law enforcement side don't come to you during the time when you're making these critical decisions. Now, I want to tell you, I am a strong Second Amendment's rights person. I do believe in that. 
I do think that we're going to have to be careful as we start looking at this in the future because if we're talking about schools and things like this, and let's hear me here now, if we're talking about going into schools, we better be real careful. Uh, let's not go further on a slippery slope. I do believe, and my brother is a prosecutor in, in Wayne County, my daughter is an assistant prosecutor, my, son, my son-in-law is a deputy sheriff in Cabell County, and we sat down and talked about this. I do have some concerns moving forward, but let's see if that's, if, how it goes. But being a strong Second Amendment rights person, I feel strongly about that end. I am very concerned at this last minute calling to say that, oh, didn't you know that we were against this, when I didn't hear anything in the committees that I've been in, anything while this bill has been being debated, and we've had it here for how many days, from anybody in the law enforcement to say, don't vote for this or make these two changes that I, I'm now hearing at this time. So, you know, I will support the override. However, I am very concerned that if what law enforcement is telling us is a problem, we may have to be back here looking at this. The second thing that I'll say is, to, to my friends in the law enforcement, come talk to us earlier. Further discussion, Senator from Harrison. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I, I hate to belabor this point. It's probably a foregone conclusion. But, you know, I've stood up here many times before you and told you that I'm not afraid of guns. I've owned a gun since I was six years old. And I've got more guns than I bet you all the... All of my colleagues there across the aisle have put together, save a couple. I'll save a couple of you. I'm not afraid of guns. Michael Bloomberg, I don't know who he is, never contacted me, never asked me to do anything. I'd never ask him to do anything, and he shouldn't ask me to do anything here in West Virginia. This is about West Virginians. And, you know, we take an oath to uphold the Constitution and do what's right for our state. But we've ignored that here because this bill lacks common sense. I got no problem with permitless carry for West Virginians. We're not giving freedoms to West Virginians when we allow people to come across our border and slip a gun in their waistband when we can't do it in their state. We're about to become one of five states that allow, one, we're going to be the sixth state that allows permitless carry, but you know we have less responsibilities on those that will carry than any of those other six states, except for Vermont. We have less than five, than four of the other five states. No training. That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the person who's never owned a gun, hears they can carry it concealed, goes out and buys it, shoots it one time or maybe never, puts it in their glove compartment, and then in a moment, when they think they're justified in pulling it out, they pull it out with nervous hands and pull the trigger and shoot their wife or shoot their child or shoot my child or your child. I beg you one more time, vote no on the override. Let's craft a common sense bill that's good for West Virginians, not for people out of state, not for criminals, but good for West Virginians. I urge you vote no. This is our last chance. Senator from Marshall. Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with the Senator from Wayne. This is a tough one because I've always stood with law enforcement. I think most of the folks in this chamber have as well. But, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of uh, explanations why we need to bill, and that is because, you know, out-of-state drug dealers and whatever that look suspicious or shady will give law enforcement officers an opportunity to pull them over, check them, frisk them, and then arrest them. The problem I have, quite frankly, as I've struggled with this bill, was, you know, just last week uh, on February 24th, there was a Fourth Circuit case that covers West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, South Carolina, North Carolina, which is the law of the land when it comes to stops, frisks, searches, 
in the state of West Virginia and the United States of America. And it points to a case of Robinson versus U.S. versus Robinson, where police in Ranson, West Virginia, just a few months ago, uh, received an anonymous tip that a black man and a passenger in a car had just been seen in a convenience store parking lot with a gun. They saw him load the gun and put it in his pocket. The car drew, drove away, and it was a high crime area. It was, uh, they were alerted to police. The police pulled him over because they weren't seeing wearing seat belts, and that's the facts of the case. So they asked him if you're carrying a gun, or are you carrying any weapons, and the passengers gave him a weird look. So based on the fact that they looked shady and had a weird look, they were arrested. They were frisked. They found they had a gun. He was a felon. wasn't allowed to have it. He entered a guilty plea, a conditional guilty plea, and appealed it to the Fourth Circuit. Whether you like it or not, the Fourth Circuit ruled in that case that uh, the issue was whether or not the, the frisk was lawful, was whether the officers had reasonable suspicion under the law of the state of West Virginia to believe that somebody was armed and dangerous. In that case, the court ruled, and it is now the law of the land, because West Virginia, because West Virginia is a concealed carry state, that it is not enough, it is not enough to just believe someone is shady or suspicious looking to ask them to be frisked. So the arguments that I keep hearing is that the reason that why we need this is so that we can have officers check people that are suspicious looking or shady looking. Unfortunately, in the state of West Virginia and the United States of America, under this Fourth Circuit opinion, that's a tool that they cannot use because those convictions, those frisks, those stops under the way the law is written today, the fact requires more because we are currently a concealed carry state. So the fact that we are a concealed carry state at the present time permits people to have a weapon, quite frankly. And the fact that they do not, just because they look shady or suspicious, does not, under the current state of the law, permit those type of searches that we've been told will be helped to prevent these kind of folks from coming in. And the fact that somebody comes in with a Michigan license plate and might look shady in and of itself will not give officers of the law, law enforcement, the opportunity to pull them over and frisk them. That's not the law of the land anymore, Mr. President. And until, or until and unless the Supreme Court of our United States would accept to hear that case and overpeel it, and overturn it. That is the law. Whether we like it or not, that is the state of the law in West Virginia. Junior Senator from the second. Thank you, Mr. President. I, like the uh, Senator from Berkeley, was going to just sit here and vote. I wasn't going to say anything. So I didn't go out and prepare examples of where this bill will actually save lives as the opposition has come up with emotional arguments why we shouldn't vote for this bill. But I can tell you from experience and from literature that this bill will help protect West Virginia in addition to keeping West Virginians free as guaranteed by the Constitution. As I said last time when we did our final debates, the Chief of Police of Washington, D.C., with very restrictive gun laws, said the citizens are going to have to protect themselves because we can't get there in time. We have that situation here. I got a letter, I got an email the other day from somebody talking about the cuts in our state troopers force uh, budget and how we're not even going to have, and I don't know whether it's true or not, we're not going to have a class for state troopers in the next year or so to fill in the ranks of the uh, decline in state troopers. The police aren't going to be able to get there as was mentioned earlier. This is a protection, and it shouldn't be a, there shouldn't be a tax on our persons or on our budgets to protect the, ourselves from danger. Mr. President, this is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to override this veto, and I urge passage of the bill. Is there further discussion? Further discussion? If not, the question for the Senate shall the bill pass. All those in favor will vote yea. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will prepare the machine.
As every member voted, if so, the clerk closed the machine ascertain results on this question. 23 yeas, 11 nays, 0 absent not voting. More than a majority of those elected to the Senate, having voted in the affirmative, declare the bill passed, notwithstanding the objections of the governor. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House.